here I am again, <clears throat> blethering on about mathematics and how we can use it to explain things, specifically in Gardner engines. I'd like to take a look at the concepts of force, torque, power, energy. Let's take a look at force first of all. As I've tried to show you before, there's a force. My right hand finger is pushing with a force into the palm of my left hand. That's force. Really, really simple. Now, what's torque? Torque is just simply a rotating force. If I press the trigger on this drill, the force that I'm feeling there, the reluctance that I'm feeling there, in my left hand is the torque. The rotating drill is developing a torque due to the energy in the battery. Power then, what's power? Power is the rate of doing work. Now, the simplest way I can explain this to you is, <clears throat> imagine a hill and you've got a load of stones at the bottom of the hill and you'd like to move the stones up to the top of the hill. Now, to move the stones up to the top of the hill, you need energy. And if we're going to use a, 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 a tractor, say, with a Gardner engine in it, um, that energy comes from the engine and from the fuel that we burn in the engine. So we need a certain amount of energy to get the stones from the bottom of the hill to the top. We could wheel them up in a wheelbarrow. We could carry them up each stone one by one by hand. But that would be a very slow way of doing it. Power is a measure of how quickly we can do that job. You'll have to agree with me that we could use the wheelbarrow to move the stones from the bottom of the hill to the top of the hill. But if we use a tractor, we'll do the job quicker. The tractor has more power, can develop more power, can contribute more power because it's got, it can burn energy quicker, more quickly than we can do with the wheelbarrow. A big tractor, a big strong tractor, a more powerful tractor will move the stones from the bottom of the hill to the top of the hill quicker. Both tractors, the big one and the small one, will do the same job at the end of the day. They'll have the stones at the top of the hill, but the big tractor will do it quicker. Now, let's go now and take a look at those concepts um, in a mathematical way and see does it help us in our understanding. Here we have a simple cylinder with a red piston in it. As the injector fires up the top and the diesel gaseous fluid inside ignites, very high pressure develops and pushes that red piston down. That's the essence of the diesel engine. From our school physics, we know that energy equals work done which equals the force F multiplied by stroke. Power equals energy over time. So in this case, power equals F times the stroke over time. So already in our very early studies, we can see that an engine designer can choose to have a long stroke and a slow revving engine or a short stroke and a high revving engine. And Gardner, in their wisdom, decided on the former. The Gardner engine has a long, typically six inch stroke and low RPM. Now, this has considerable advantages in terms of reliability and long longevity and so on. And in fact, from that long stroke, a lot of the typical characteristics of the Gardner engine derive. Let's just imagine that this flywheel is on an engine and it's rotating. And let's just pretend for the minute, this is just a thought experiment, not, nothing to be taken too seriously, um, that I'd like to stop it. I want to stop the engine, or I want to break the engine. I want to slow it down. If I want to slow it down, I can put my finger here. I'd be very foolish to do that, of course. But again, it's only a thought experiment. 
So I put my finger here and I oppose the rotation of the engine. The engine is rotating this way and I try to slow it down and stop it by applying a force here. Now, it's pretty easy to understand, but if I try to apply the force here, it'll be a lot more difficult. I think you'll understand that. As I move my finger out, right out to the maximum, the further out it goes, the less force I'll have to apply. If this flywheel was, I don't know, 20 meters in diameter or something, I could probably put my finger up on the periphery of the, of the flywheel and stop the engine. The bigger the radius, the more torque I can apply for a given force. So from this, we can conclude as only common sense that torque equals force multiplied by the radius. I can have a big torque by either having a big force here, which my puny little finger is not able to exert, or a big radius. Torque equals force multiplied by radius. It's as simple as that. Here we're considering the force F going round the periphery of the flywheel. Again, as in the previous slide, energy equals force times distance. Distance here is the circumference of that circle. And you'll remember from school that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So the energy equals F times 2 pi times r. It's as simple as that. But F times r is the torque. So we can rewrite that equation as energy equals 2 pi times the torque. That's in one rev. Power then is energy over time. The time taken for one rev is of course related to the RPM. So we can see that power equals 2 pi times the torque times the RPM all over 60. We'll need the 60 there to, to uh, consider the power expended in one second rather than one minute. Let's consider then a Gardner 6LXB developing 160 horsepower at 1650 RPM. Now, one horsepower, each horsepower equals 746 watts. So the total power that we're going to get out of this engine here is 119.36 kilowatts. Power equals torque times omega. Now, omega is a new variable to you. And all it is, is just the RPM measured in radians per second. Remember, radians are just the same as degrees. Again, they just help us to get our final result in the correct unit. So power equals torque times omega. The eventual formula then is 119.360 equals torque multiplied by 2 pi multiplied by n, which is um, 1650 all over 60. If we work that all out, we get a torque of 1690 newton meters, which I think you'll find is kind of reasonably realistic. If you take that 690 and plug it back into the power formula, you'll come back out with in or about 160 brake horsepower. So it looks correct. Now, it'd be really nice if the graph of torque against RPM was a nice flat line. Um, but in practice, it's not. You can see from that purple line there that there's a bit of a dip in it at the start where the engine is only ticking over and at the end where the engine is going flat out. Um, there's a variety of theoretical reasons for this got to do with the, the way the flame blows, uh, burns in the diesel fuel. And it's too much for me to explain that to you here now. So there is a slight curve on that purple line there. But as engines go, it's really pretty flat. The Gardner does really well on this score. The torque graph is really, really quite flat, which means the graph of power against RPM, as you can see there on the green line, is a straight line, more or less a straight line. So again, this is where the Gardner scores big. We've got a lot of power and a lot of torque at relatively low RPM. Well done Gardner. If you want to understand something deeply, really deeply, you need to be able to treat it mathematically. Ultimately, mathematics 
is the truth.